How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? Welcome to Stockholm Syndrome, the show. I was about to say, welcome to one of the best shows I've reacted to, but I know that that cannot be true. Objectively, it's not. I know objectively, this is not as good as Chainsaw Man, this is not as good as Beastars, this is not as good as Demon Slayer, but boy oh boy, has this been the most exciting couple of weeks in my entire reaction career. This season has just been so hype, and sure, it's a mixture of like, sunk cost because we're on the fourth season of this show, and the fact that season three just wasn't very good, but I gotta tell you, I'm having a lot of fun. So with that being said, welcome to some S-tier content. Let's get into it. Now we have some hope. It is odd, though. How did Francis discover the location of this Port Mafia hideout? I suppose he must have used his eyes of God or whatever. Junichiro has the attitude and expression of somebody so incredibly exhausted, they'll just go along with anything. How did Francis discover the location of this hideout? He probably used his eyes of God thing or whatever, I don't know. I say we investigate further into this. I say you just shut the fuck up for once. You think it might be a trap, right? Is that the reason you won't join the Port Mafia? Why does she need to give you a reason she doesn't want to join the Port Mafia? It's the enemy terrorist organization. What, is that not reason enough? Chief, we just got word from the enemy terrorist group. They're saying... They're saying they'll stop attacking if I join them. Oh, that's sick! I don't know if it's sick. Oh, what, you don't want to join ISIS? I can go. I'll join the Mafia instead. My ability of light snow ought to be useful enough to satisfy them. Oh, Junichiro wants to join ISIS. They aren't asking for you, Junichiro. All you've done is expose yourself right now. Electromagnetic waves from the Aurora destroyed electronic equipment, resulting in pre-modern close quarters combat. Is, is... Is that true? That's not true. Is the Aurora Borealis like an EMP field? No, right? <laughs> Not the reaction I want to see after finding out she's 11 years old. Let us worship you! Please, piss off! Are you that enamored with my Yosuno that you're willing to lose your life over her? Not the man I want to see her with after finding out she's 11 years old. Oh, he's going to pickle our organs. Since when am I your Yosuno? Did you buy me at an auction I wasn't aware of, Chief Mori? How'd you like your ears bitten off? Yosuno, please stop. Threatening to bite his ears is not going to make him any less possessive. Unbelievable. I'm not telling you to thank me with tears of joy or anything. But don't you have any intention of hurrying back to the front? You know, now that you're all better? Yeah, I don't think almost dying gets people very eager to go out and almost die again. Which is why I'd like to present you with this gift. Hmm? Is that one of my butterflies? Oh, Dopo Poet Smooth Operator? No, it's... Metal. Thank you so much, my angel. All right, settle down. Elise, the next chart, please. Yes, Master Mori. What is Elise? How is she older? What, did Mori's taste get younger over the years? That idea is so dark, I almost didn't include that joke in this video. Shit! Get down! Oh my god, that missile twisted his limbs off. That was metal as fuck. Would the Aurora Borealis do that too? Today makes the fifth time. I like to keep tally with this character. It's the character that stands for true. What's he gonna do if he dies more times than it takes to write out that character? What, is he gonna have to change it to true as fuck? Please, oh, my leg. Oh, my leg. No more. I don't want to go to the front anymore. This is such a sick backstory. She's like re-zeroing this entire army. I like how they're using the fucking Aurora Borealis as an excuse to give her a World War I backstory. As your superior officer, I'm obliged to dole out your orders, but for some reason I have a hard time saying no to a young girl's wishes. Not your wishes, though. Do it. <laughs> oh my god. For some reason, I have a tough time saying no to a sweet young girl like you. Psych, I own you, bitch. They all died. If it weren't for me, they could have left with mere injuries. Do you know the word annihilation? Do I know it? Don't insult my intelligence. Annihilation isn't a very obscure word. Stop it! Take his dagger! Everyone's gonna die because of that bitch! This isn't war! Let me go, asshole! Actually, isn't the problem that nobody's going to die because of this bitch? 
You're so much more than that. You've descended on the battlefield as an angel of death. Oh my god, she's the angel of death? She's the reason the other guy had to be the angel of murder? Oh my god, I can't remember the last time a joke came back to haunt me this hard. God, what an awesome backstory for such a nothing character. I'm furious I didn't come up with this idea. This would make such a sick short film. The idea of having somebody in a little military platoon who can, like, revive soldiers and having them all be super hyped about it at first and then get really pissed off later is so cool. What a great little, like, special episode. What a, what a sick flashback episode that I'm absolutely livid I didn't come up with. That's not it. My Ultra Deduction is the best special ability. None of the others matter at all. With me on your side, I can solve any problem you have. Oh, I want to see these two become best friends. If you doubt me, I can prove it to you. <laughs> oh my god! He does magic! Rombo Supremacy! Rombo for Best Boy at the 2024 Anime Awards! We want that kindness of yours that goes with it. You didn't want anyone to die, did you? That's why you're in so much pain. Yo, Goku who? Luffy? Never even heard of him. Rombo is the best anime MC. Nothing. It's time to go. The transaction takes place through the door. So like, am I joining ISIS or what? Brief episode transition, if you like what you're seeing here and you wanna get more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you'll get access to an exclusive reaction video each month. Right now I'm reacting to Blue Lock, and you also have access to all of my Food Wars reactions that I've already done. On top of that, you get access to my exclusive Discord server and access to all the live streams I've recorded in the past and will do in the future. On top of all that, you'll just be helping out the page a ton and ensuring I'm able to keep putting out as much content as I do. If all that sounds good to you, make sure you check out the link in my description below. Now, on to the next one. Well, he doesn't need to worry. Your deal with Francis isn't a trap like he suspects it might be. Oh, how are you so sure? Because I know Atsushi believes him. Okay, well Atsushi isn't exactly the most critical thinker. Once you bear your soul to someone by trading mortal blows with them, they won't be fooled by your lies anymore. I feel like somebody attempting to kill me is the perfect reason to try and trick them. Their ambulance is here! We've been waiting for you, Atsushi! <laughs> Can somebody at least make sure Kenji's on a good life insurance plan? I hope this isn't what I think it is. Kenji! <laughs> Oh my god. Kenji, just stay down. Please. It's not worth getting back up again. And to be honest, you haven't really even been helping. The hunting dogs! Everyone run now! The transaction was a trap! Francis has sided with the enemy! Damn it. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing coming exactly one minute after your speech about bearing your soul to your enemy or whatever. They're fighting for their lives. I always side with the winners. And in this fight, the detective agency will win. Yeah, not if Kenji has anything to say about it. Kenji! I'm alright. This is nothing. Kenji, I said stay down! That's the attitude that keeps getting you stabbed! Uh, a raincoat? It's not even raining. What is this, your first anime? People dress in ridiculous things all the time. Kenji! <laughs> Oh, don't worry, this is nothing. Right, Kenji? I can't get the sword out! Move. Guys, if you can't get the sword out of Kenji, just get Kenji off of the sword. Just pull him off it. This doesn't need to be a three-man operation. Listen up, everyone. We're heading to a secret Port Mafia escape route. Let's go. Let's go? You guys are still surrounded by military police. You didn't even take care of the sword guy. I think you're missing a few steps in between now and escaping. But something still seems off. Yosuno. Huh. 
I can't thank you enough. You just saved my life. You think Kenji's coming in with this kind of energy every time she heals him? It is sweet. Uh, but I do feel like it'd get annoying really fast. She's had to bring him back from the brink of death genuinely, I think, six times in the past three episodes. You think every time he's just like, oh my god, Yosuno, you, you saved my life. Yes, Kenji, you're welcome. I thought I was gonna die! You s Yes, Kenji, you're welcome! Each one of them has the military power of a thousand special forces soldiers. A thousand? They're a bunch of super freaks, and there are five of them, too! Hey Shaggy, when are you gonna finally hit puberty? Was Junichiro always voice cracking this much? You're about to enter a complex maze. Follow this map meticulously to reach your escape vehicles. I want Kenji to take a step forward and a buzzsaw comes and just takes his head off. You know what I've been wondering? Why isn't Atsushi, like, just a tiger all the time? Like, does using his ability consume chakra or something? Like, why isn't he just always a tiger boy? Yeah, I get a look at the face of the person I'm fighting. <laughs> oh my god, it's the soldier she kept bringing back. Awesome, great. No notes, I love that. <laughs> Stay back, you dumb shit! What? Shoot the guy! I can't believe a guy with two guns just showed up and he isn't shooting at the man controlling the sword. The escape boat is in the underground drain ahead. <laughs> oh, come on, that's nothing. You kidding me? That'd be like a scraped knee for Kenji. I have a badass older brother. I used to hate being compared to him all the time. I turned to crime so I could become his opposite. Buddy, on the list of characters I do not need to hear the backstories of, I can promise you, you are at the very top. What is it, Ken? Did my story strike a chord? Hey! Oh my god, especially if he's just gonna die two seconds after telling it. Run! I can't control it! I can't control the sword! No! Honestly, that's fine too. This little group consisted of the three most pointless characters in the entire show. Especially considering that one of them was literally Octagawa's sister that he only ever acknowledged one time. And thanks to you, I'm no longer lonely! Oh my god, you can use your ability on guns? What are you carrying an old saber around for? I am the fifth hunting dog, undercover agent Michizo Tachihara. Okay, so here's what's embarrassing about this twist. And I recognize that this is my fault, but I genuinely, genuinely thought that this was Jinichiro dropping his voice. But I was so uncertain about it that I had to then Google who the fifth hunting dog was just to find out it was the guy whose backstory I didn't want to hear. I thought this was Jinichiro dropping his voice and using a different name. This is such a lamer twist. Do to me as you wish. I'm also fine with this. I'm sure she's not dead, but she could be, and I wouldn't care. She's a character I could completely take or leave. Like, her backstory is really cool, but it doesn't make her cool. It's not like Rampa, where his backstory enhanced his already really fun personality. Hers is just a really cool short film concept that makes for a really good special episode, but it doesn't do anything for her incredibly bland personality. You know, like, Yosuno's just kind of, like, serious and moody, with, like, none of the charm that a character like Raven from Teen Titans has. So, cool backstory, great two episodes. I, d I don't care if she dies. Same way with, I don't care about the twist of whatever his name is. Unless it suddenly turns him into a way cooler character, which it could, considering he's like now the leader of the hunting dogs, which is a very interesting group. Um, but just taking a character who's had a collective like eight lines across four seasons and being like, oh, turns out they're the big villain, 
doesn't do anything for me, at least initially. But as always, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of these two episodes, let me know what you thought of this video, and let me know what your favorite jokes from this episode were. And I will see you guys next time. Hey,